Hello, friends and family, and welcome back to another Global Pandemic Crippling Anxiety Meditation Hour that lasts 10 minutes. As usual, this is not meditation instruction, and I am not a meditation teacher. Um, for anyone who doesn't know me, this is just an open conversation about meditation. Today, I wanted to talk about an intersection of a few of the questions that have come up. They are all rooted in this idea of getting started with meditation. Why should I get started with meditation? Or if I have started, and I've stopped, how do I restart? Or if I had started before and I've stopped, how do I deal with the feeling like I can't meditate or it's not possible to meditate? I think the most useful one-line quote I can think of which pertains to this situation is from my first Vipassana course there were a strange set of circumstances um, which led to an interaction between me and another student which normally there are not. You're not normally interacting with any other students in any ways. Um, and this was quite a passive interaction. But um, the student ended up leaving the course. And I consequently felt very guilty about that. And the teacher asked me the next day how I was feeling and I was crippled with guilt. I, I could feel it throughout my entire body and I was just heavy and sinking. And his response to that was, there is no guilt in Vipassana. I think it's safe to say, by extension, that there is no guilt in anapana. <laughs> so if you are doing anapana meditation and you feel like you should be meditating more, longer, or for more often, for more often, <laughs> more often, twice a day if you're meditating once a day, seven times a week if you're meditating four times a week um, or if your practice has stopped completely that you feel like you wish you could start up again or if you feel like you can't start up again you wish you you feel like you wish you could get to the point where you could start up again And I think that this root of anapana meditation, um, of accepting whatever is happening, um, can be used here. So even if you feel you are unable to meditate, that you can accept that feeling. There is no value in feeling guilty about not meditating. And so you can accept that you feel like you cannot meditate. Um, and that is actually a step in the right direction. That will actually be a step toward meditating itself. It may not feel like it initially, but 
to feel guilty, to feel self-pity. These are steps away from meditation. And you can also feel acceptance about those feelings. You can accept whatever is happening right now, no matter what it is. And that will be a step toward your meditation practice. There is an important distinction to be made here between the kinds of activities that I've previously drawn analogs to, healthy eating, exercising regularly. I think we all often feel quite guilty about doing these things or not doing these things or any other wholesome activity that we feel we should be doing or unwholesome activity that we feel like we should be avoiding. That it's a very natural habit for us to cling to these activities, the activities we know to be good, one way or the other. And that it is important, um, no less difficult, unfortunately, but important that we don't do that with meditation. Because meditation is intended to take us away from negative mental states, negative ideas, negative emotions, and move us toward wholesome ideas, wholesome mental states, wholesome emotions. It is important that we keep that fundamental property in mind. However gross it may be, however easy to intellectualize it may be, this is a very important first step. And that first step is to remember why we are meditating in the first place. And the purpose of meditation is this, to, you call them wholesome, you call them unwholesome, you can call them whatever you like, to rid ourselves or to dampen our unhelpful, unwholesome, unproductive mental states, whatever those may be. These mental states tend to be things like obsession, anxiety, depression. If meditation itself becomes an instrument of these mental states. If you begin feeling guilty, anxious, or depressed about your meditation practice, then you can leave it aside entirely um, and come back to it when you are ready.
I do often think that we will surprise ourselves with how often we are ready for meditation, but we don't feel like we are ready. It can be surprising how often what feels like a very bad, scare quotes, bad meditation it can actually be incredibly helpful. Our mind might be running amok the entire time we're sitting with our eyes closed. And it may still be one of the most beneficial meditations we have that month. Part of the reason is that if our mind is running amok, that means that we are probably quite deep in one of these negative mental states. Obsession, anxiety, depression, fear, <laughs> craving, whatever it is that we are stuck and even if it doesn't feel like we are meditating at all we are at least getting a glimpse of where we are stuck how we are stuck and to whatever tiny degree why we are stuck and Looking that thing in the face, which is what meditation is, is staring these things down. It's, it's never to run away from them. Um, as unpleasant as it may be, if we are feeling anxious, if we are feeling overly sad, if we're feeling overly afraid, meditation is the process of staring those things in the face. It's never to escape from those things. But through the act of staring those things in the face, those things then become a little weaker a little weaker and we start to see them more clearly what is my fear exactly where is my fear where is my fear coming from why and these answers are never the answers that we have on the surface. Initially, we project our fear or our anxiety or our depression or our anger onto something. A loved one is making me mad. A politician is making me disappointed <laughs> death is making me afraid but that's never really the whole truth and it's often quite far removed from the actual truth and so if we can stare at the truth our projections will still be there for, for quite some time. But the act of observation will uncover more and more about the actual truth in behind our perceptions.
And so I would encourage people um, to look at this situation as twofold. One, when you are in a state where you are feeling actually crippled, actually incapacitated by thought, folding on thought, folding on thought, or emotion, folding on thought, folding on emotion, or emotion over emotion. And it feels as though we can't extract ourselves from that. That under those circumstances, we should not, as much as is possible for us, we should not worsen the situation by feeling that we are disappointing ourselves or disappointing anyone else or missing out on something because we are not meditating at those times. We can try to remind ourselves that it's okay and that things will change and then when they change the situation the circumstances will be different and we will behave differently in those circumstances that's category one where it's impossible to do anything really um, in those situations <laughs> be very easy on yourself as much as possible and as you move out of that situation and you find yourself progressing toward a point where you're transitioning I'm using the center point <laughs> as transition um, where you're transitioning into a spot where you feel like you can use some of the tools that you know to help yourself move further and further away from the transition point and into a healthy state For whatever value of healthy <laughs> um, for some of us on some days and some weeks that's simply getting out of bed and going to work and these days that is getting out of bed and walking over to a desk because you can't actually use a change of scenery to augment that transition As you move through this transition and come out on the other side, you can, and I would recommend, starting with whatever is easiest for you if that's playing a musical, musical instrument, if that is going for a jog, if that's possible for you right now. If that is reading a good book, if that is listening to music, if that is having a long conversation with somebody Whatever it is that moves you 
over this boundary and past the edge of the boundary so you feel a little more normal, a little more stable, then you can start to reasonably think about meditation again. And only insofar as it is a useful tool for you. So as you come across to the second category, as and when meditation is useful to you, dig into it <laughs> would be my suggestion. So while you're here, make good use of the time that is available to you. If you have 10 minutes before breakfast, if you have 10 minutes before you go to bed, that you can make use of that time in such a way that you can improve the situation, potentially. If meditation is working for you, you're, you're moving along the spectrum even further. Um, but also to take stock, because if you sit to meditate and <clears throat> if you find that it is extremely difficult to meditate, you may realize in those moments that you thought you were way over here, but you're actually very close to this dividing line. And that will help you get your bearings. Whatever you were doing at the dividing line, reading a book, listening to music, playing music, talking to people, whatever it was that was going on there, you can go back to that. And again, you need not feel any guilt about the fact that you may not be meditating at those points. You may find it too difficult. Or you may not. It, it may be possible for you to meditate even as you're finding yourself drifting back toward this dividing line between the operational world, the functional world, and um, what I think many folks are feeling right now, which is this world of dysfunction. And of course, you're never static, right? You're moving between these things all the time. And so um, taking stock is helpful in determining where you feel you are along the spectrum and how you can push yourself from one side to the other along that same spectrum to try to improve. It is a bit self-referential, this situation where a person knows that he or she is having difficulties and it can be particularly difficult if a person knows not only that they're having difficulties but knows the way out and can't engage it. That can be one of the most frustrating experiences. And if that is happening to you, I can only suggest being patient and to look to the support of your friends and family 
and to know that this won't last forever, whatever this is. I've taken a few extra minutes than I'd intended. Um, if you have a timer for 10 minutes, and if you're so inclined, uh, you can pause the video at this point and set up your 10 minute timer. And I've got my timer for 10 minutes and we can begin.
that's our timer for today and I hope everyone um, found this conversation useful and um, is very gentle with themselves in all the situations that are going on right now. In all regards, take care of yourselves and we will see you back here tomorrow. Good night.